got it. Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here. Uh, let's just get out of the way. Go ahead, pause this video, go in the comment section, leave your 360 no scope or quick scope reference. Come on, let's go. All right, now that you've resumed the video and got that out of your system, yes, it's here, the all elusive, but very real unicorn of the long range world. That is the shy tech M200 intervention. It's real. Um, I posted this on Instagram and right away people were asking, please tell me that's not the airsoft gun. This is kind of towards the end of the day. Uh, at the time I'm shooting this, I've already got experience on this gun. So I'm just kind of shooting the talking portion to kind of uh, make the main body of this video. Towards the end of the day here, hopefully the cicadas, you can't hear as much through the lav mic and we're running out of sun. So with that said, I'm gonna run through some of the info pretty quickly, but yeah, long story short, uh, shooting is shown in this video because uh, up until now, it's pretty rare to find shooting of the 408 or the 375 Shytech M200 intervention on YouTube. Um, there's like that one episode of Future Weapons from years back, but really there's not much on it. Uh, but I'm lucky enough to have it in front of me. So uh, without any further ado, I, I say we just get into it. To review the M200 intervention, I think it's only fair to actually start with the projectile it fires. The one in front of me is actually chambered in 408 Shytech, which is the first cartridge it was developed uh, for the M200. Now, before they even developed the rifle, they started with the bullet. That's what ends up getting on target, so it was a good place to start. The main idea behind it is they wanted something, a sniper-specific uh, cartridge, to bridge the gap between, the wide gap between the 338 Lapua Magnum and the 50 BMG. I happen to have those here for reference. It's funny how it kind of makes a 338 look incredibly small. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to balance them on here, so I'll get some close-ups, but we got 50 BMG 408 and 338 Lapua. 338 Lapua, that's a concussive round. You will get no friends at the gun range shooting that thing. It is a concussive bang, and the 408 just towers over that. And of course, the monster is 50. That could be a little unnecessary. With that said, I have another array. I, uh, I'll probably just throw some B-roll here of 50 BMG, 408, 338, 300 Win Mag, 308, 65 Creedmoor, and 556 in that order, so you guys can kind of get a little map of perspective there. Uh, but yeah, it did start out with the 408. Uh, years later, they actually came out with the 375 Shytech. Uh, so with that said, let me tell you guys a little bit about the 408 and the 375 since I'm at it. So this is a 419 grain bullet going out at 2,850 feet per second. It's got a muzzle energy of 8,372 pound feet and a ballistic coefficient of, get this, 0.949. Okay, if you guys don't know what that means, just uh, know that that's very good. My 6.5 Creedmoor is, you know, probably about 0.56 for non-match, 6 0.6 right around for ELDMs or something like that, if I remember correctly. Uh, 0.949, that's just a crazy good ballistic coefficient. Uh, but it gets even better. If you wanted to go 375 shy tech, you'll probably get noticeably less recoil, which is cool on its own right. But the 375 would be a 350 grain going out at 2,970 feet per second, muzzle energy of 6,723 pound feet. Ballistic coefficient on that bad boy is 0.988. It's just getting crazy. These are lasers for rounds. And specifically the 408 I heard has equal to and sometimes greater uh, energy than the 50 BMG at certain ranges. But yeah, just a monster cartridge. So that was a fair place to start. All right, I don't really know where to really begin uh, with the rifle itself. There's a lot to kind of go over. I might be all over the place. Uh, don't get mad at me, I'm a little excited here. Uh, top rail, uh, you have the option between 20 and 40 MOA slant. Uh, to get that slant so where you could use some more milling of your scope for those extreme long range shots. The trigger is a Timony trigger, uh, adjustable. I think if I had a guess at the moment, it seems really light, probably about one and a half pounds, barely over if anything, but yeah, it's a really, really great trigger. Um, on top of the entire gun doesn't move because it weighs so much. More on that in just a second here. It's got a 29 inch barrel, same as the M82, the Barrett M82. Uh, it's got a removable muzzle brake, four port on each side, so eight port muzzle brake removable to put on a suppressor uh, that Shytech is uh, working on right now. If I saw their Facebook, they're developing something, so that'd be pretty sweet. I uh, cannot imagine this thing suppressed. That'd be way cool. Going to the opposite side, we have got a adjustable stock and actually uh, a collapsible stock that you guys can press this little button here, move it all the way forward. And in the operated configuration, I like it's right about there. And it has a monopod that can actually be stowed uh, within it, 
by folding it, uh, pulling it out and folding it back in. Loosen and tighten to raise and lower it. Uh, very, very nice. The bipod, same kind of mechanism. You pull it down um, and then you can move it forward or back, but it is integral to the whole build. And it's just got this really broad, wide stance. So this thing just doesn't move. You got three points of contact very far apart from each other. And again, the weight. Shytech says it weighs uh, 31 pounds. Not on my scale. Uh, without the scope, this thing was just over 33 pounds. Uh, to give you an idea, the Barrett M82 29 inch barrel semi automatic 50 BMG without a scope is just under 30. It's about 29 point something. Um, so, yeah, let's just say over 31 pounds to be fair for the 408. Uh, so it's a beast. The thing just does not move. Much of that weight's probably due to that really thick contoured 29 inch barrel. Um, what else here? We have got a detachable box mag, seven rounds. This thing actually feeds from the mag super smooth. It's actually easier to feed it from the mag than trying to get that little sharp uh, bullet in there. Uh, if you mag feed it, this thing is super slick, actually. A big old bolt, feels great. In its operating configuration, the way I like it personally, my length of pull, where I have it, it's about the same length to give you perspective as what I keep referring to, the Barrett M82. Um, that in itself is already a big gun, so maybe that's not really putting it to perspective. So here's both of those guns next to a 20 inch barreled M16. Um, yeah, so hopefully that puts in perspective and why not just a Breda 92 uh, to show it even more. This thing is huge. I don't know if me standing next to it will kind of show that, but my wingspan, you can just see, it's just a huge gun. And like I said, it weighs more than the Barrett. So let me talk about some shooting impressions, I guess. Because it weighs that much, and it's not a 50 BMG, kicks significantly less than a 50 BMG. I was really surprised, actually. It actually kicks, honestly, like a, uh, a very lightweight 308 with no muscle break, or less, actually. I'd argue probably less. It, it, the kick is just not bad. Uh, very pleasant to shoot, actually. It's a bummer way. Uh, one would expect that, especially at its price. Should I say it? I guess so. Uh, the thing starts at just a hair under $12,000, 11850 or so. Uh, they could get up to right around the $13,000 mark, just depending. Do you want a cleaning kit, extra mag, a certain color, all kinds of stuff like that. But they start at just around the $12,000 mark. Comes in a nice hard case though. So maybe it's a very expensive hard case and it comes with a free Shytech M200 intervention. You can look at it however you want. It's a pretty penny. That's not the end of it though. Um, pay to play to buy the rifles, one thing. You get a nice scope as well. We'll talk about, that's another. Uh, price per round. Um, yeah, you could get ammo from Shytech themselves. Uh, 408 Shytech. I know Desert Tech also makes uh, 408 and 375 Shytech. You're looking at roughly, I'll just give you the big number just so you know, I'm not, you don't have to chase it around. Prepare to pay about $10 a shot. That's up there. The brass is probably worth a good deal as well, so just collect that. But yeah, it's that's the thing. Once you pay the 12 grand, it's not over yet. Uh, so this is not for the faint of heart. Um, it's for the ultimate. Now, with that said, some people just have that kind of jingle in their pocket to where they know they're probably not even going to shoot it that often. But if you want an M200 intervention, there is no alternative. I've had this in my household for just about the last week and a half at the point I'm making this video. And every single day I've looked at it and every single day I've just been in awe at it. It's guns like this that really des uh, desensitize you and your excitement for other really cool stuff just draws, just drops a little bit just because of the intensity of this. Picking it up at my FFL and everything, it's just super exciting. The silhouette of M200, nothing like it. Once you see it in person, um, it's, it's like you spotted Bigfoot. It's, it's really this elusive but very real thing. It's sweet, man. So. With that said, I'm not, I'm not, this isn't an analytical review where I'm saying it's overpriced or whatever. I get it. Uh, it's very well made. It's very accurate as we're about to find out here. It's a joy to shoot if you want it and justify the price getting it. Uh, but the $10 a shot kind of hurts you. Just shoot it at slower pace. You're not going to be shooting at 200 yards, 300, 500. Honestly, a thousand is a waste of time. Um, this is something that you're really only wanting to shoot well past a mile. And, uh, and, that's, and that's what it is. And if you don't shoot it, just know it's, it's probably the best uh, wall decor or uh, thing you could put on your, next to your office desk. It's just a really sweet piece. Back to the round real quickly. The big thing with this is um, the claim to fame is that the stability, once it goes uh, to the uh, uh, transonic phase, well over 2,000 yards, I think probably right around 2,500 yards, uh, the transonic phase going back down to subsonic, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the patented, piece of design on this is that it stays very, very um, balanced through that advanced uh, balanced flight technology or whatever they call it. But it's true. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have that kind of range. I had to drive three hours north uh, to be able to access 2000 yards because the place I shoot 700 wasted time. 
Um, so that's exactly what we did, and why not? Just because I want to show every little bit of shooting that I have on video. Let me show the side in process. Thankfully, that only happened in three shots, so I didn't have to take too many shots uh, there. And then we'll show it. I went to Triple C, which is a range in Crescent, Texas, 2,000 yards. It's a pretty steep ramp. We started at 1,000 and worked up to it. And uh, with that said, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy again because there's not a whole lot of content with this rifle. So uh, check out some shooting portion and we'll kind of wrap this up in just a second here. That's not bad at all. Wow, that feels really good. All right, very anticipated. I've been drooling over this gun uh, as it was displayed over my computer for the last couple of days. Finally gonna be able to stretch it out. Did a quick side in with only a couple of rounds and it's on at 100. This is when you know you're dealing with something pretty incredible. The day today starts at 1,000 yards. So we'll see how that goes. Just gonna do 1,000, just kinda confirm everything's all good with the wind and everything and uh, move past. There's that delay. All right, we're at 1500 now, going up 500 from the last one. Again, a thousand's no slouch, but it kind of is for a 408 shy tech There it is, that's delayed. All right, I got the camera in at one mile. Nice. First attempt at a mile, I think I got it all figured out right now. Nice. Ready. Okay. Ready. Oh, oh you see that? Oh, where'd it go? Half a foot left, good it, elevation. It. it was just right to the left there. I got it. You got it? I, it's rocking. Nice. Yeah, you got that one straight that rocked on. It. Yeah, you kind of see the shade it yep, cast. Yep, for sure. That's no doubt about it. Well, there it is guys, uh, some shooting on the M200 Intervention. Again, not much of that kind of content on YouTube, unfortunately, uh, but uh, adding a little bit more to the library. Uh, for those of you wondering, um, this is actually topped with a Vortex Razor AMG. I thought that'd be a cool topper on this guy, just because not a whole lot of people talk about this. This is actually a step above what most people would call their best optic, the Razor HD Gen 2, the Japanese scope. This is actually made in America. Uh, it's a six to 24 by 50, 30 millimeter tube, uh, that may not seem as feature rich as the other one, but uh, the glass is unbelievable. Like I said, it's made in America. Their AMG series of scopes are very, very good. So uh, the price shows for it too. The street price is right around the same as the Razor HD Gen 2, but you know, pretty sweet American rifle, pretty sweet American scope, both made in America. I thought I'd kind of pair them together and that's how we're able to get out there. EBR 7B reticle on this guy. Uh, we also have a little US Optics uh, bubble leveler that kind of folds out here. 
Uh, very, very cool. That kind of helps stay level. That way I know I'm not making windage uh, corrections when I don't have to be, so that helps quite a bit. Um, but anyway, yeah. Um, other than that, anything I kind of skipped, that's all I really wanted to cover. Um, other than just some more ergonomics about it. A2 grip, you can switch that out for whatever else you want later. Some people on Instagram were griping about that. You can put whatever you want. A2 works for me. That's what's on the M82. Um, carry handle, but upside down. Uh, M82 has kind of got one up here uh, in a centered balance point. This one's pretty centered. Let me see. You guys might not be, <laughs> be able to even see me. It's probably pretty dark, but you can carry it from the handle like this. Upside down, it's actually a pretty good center point of it. Geez, how can you have this thing and not get some like massive biceps within a month? This thing is just like better than P90X. Anyway, I might have positioned that slightly out of frame now, but I know that video probably probably wasn't terribly long, but it's just an elusive unicorn type of gun that doesn't have a whole lot of content. So I thought I would show it off right there. Uh, there's actually kind of a specific reason I wanted this gun at this time. Pretty soon here, I don't know if it's gonna be the next video or two videos from now, we're gonna make a video titled Call of Duty Guns in Real Life. My most viewed video is uh, PUBG Guns in Real Life. Second to that is Fortnite Guns. Then I did a Modern Warfare specific gun um, in real life. We're just gonna do a broad Call of Duty Guns in Real Life. So you could bet this guy is gonna be in there. Uh, but that's it for this video. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys could still even see me, but that's gonna do it for this one. Take care.